Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on The Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Welcome, all you wonderful pet parents. Thank you so much for joining me again this week on the Pet Parenting Reset. As always, I am your host, Jessica L. Fisher, and today we are talking about why the sit cue is so redundant. And uh, I really want you to rethink this. You know, it's really one of the first things we teach our dogs is to sit, and I find myself even when I am trying to train a dog not to do something, it's really easy to say, well, we need to get them to do something else instead. And so sit is one of the like main things that almost every dog knows how to do. It's a pretty easy uh, position for a dog to get into. And the thing about it is that when we're always asking for a sit, I really started thinking about this lately because my husband and I have been working with our dogs since we moved. Um, you know, I've talked in the past about how dogs are very situational. And while they may understand that some, something to be true in one instance, in one environment, that doesn't necessarily transfer to other environments. In fact, usually it doesn't. We have to continue training in other environments and with distractions, et cetera, et cetera, to really get a, you know, all around good cue in with our dogs. So when we moved, um, I knew we were going to have to do a lot of retraining basically with our dog. We're in a totally new environment and there was a lot of stress around moving. Um, just the sheer fact that we drove for three days and we were in uh, two different hotels for, you know, two nights we got here on the third night and that all is I mean, it doesn't matter how much you prepare for it. And I did, I prepared a lot for it. Uh, It doesn't matter how much you prepare for it. There's stress involved in that. So all of that coupled with now we have this new environment and now we have like boxes coming into the house and, you know, and, 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 and all of these things I knew ahead of time. And, you know, my husband and I talked about it. We know Kim's an amazing dog. She's wonderful. And we really never worried about her for much of anything. We knew there were going to be things that we needed to work on with her, that we needed to reinforce with her, and also new things that we were wanting to add in because we are in a very different environment than we were the last place we lived. So we worked on, um, Kim was pretty good with her recall, but we didn't have a huge backyard in our last home. And we have a decent sized backyard now. So I knew that we were going to have to do a lot of reinforcing of the recall for it. Just, just one, one example. Um, the other thing we have really been working on with her are thresholds, um, specifically entering and exiting our home. And so we have a front door and we have a back door and we have been really working on uh, getting her to check in with us before walking over a threshold. And this has been something, one, the the front yard, I mean, we live in a cul-de-sac, but right now there's still a lot of construction going on. So construction trucks and, and just trucks from, you know, workers and things are going by a lot. So you know, even once it's all built out, we won't have very much traffic here, but right now we do have a little bit of traffic. So, you know, we want to make sure she doesn't bolt out the front door. And honestly, she, she has been very, very good. I like, we trained her, um, with door, you know, I, I called it door dashing. And that was a video that I put up on YouTube, um, a few years ago when I really got like, okay, I'm, we're going to, we're going to train her to make sure because she never, she never has run out the door, but I wanted to make sure we intentionally trained with her. So she knew that that was, that was what we expected. And so she, she's really good with not, she doesn't run out the door, but 
Also in the backyard, we have a much larger backyard now, and we have different types of animals here. We live in a very different environment, a different climate, a different, I mean, we're, you know, we're still in the U S obviously, but it's very different. And we knew that the backyard was going to be different. For example, in our old home, we left the back door open like all the time in many, many days out of the year, the weather was nice enough that we left the back door open and Kim kind of walked in and out as she pleased, as long as we were in the living, the, the area where the living area, where the door was. Um, if we walked away from that, if we had to leave that area, of course we would bring her in and shut the door. I was always there or my husband was always there to see her. Like she was never out of eyesight. If she ever walked out of eyesight, I would walk outside to uh, be with her. That's, that's my thing. I don't like leaving dogs alone outside, but, um, I'm really getting off topic, but it's, it, it believe me, listen, like this is, you're going to understand why I decided to talk about this today in our, the backyard, the way it is now, plus the bug situation, plus um, just all the different animals that could be around that were not in the last, um, city we lived in. We do not keep the back door open and going outside is intentional. Also there are, I mean, there's just so much more. We live in a, we live in a neighborhood that's built out or is being built out, but, um, it hasn't been a neighborhood for very long. And actually this whole area that we live in was uh, farmland and, and very, very rural for a long time. So there are still animals here that would otherwise not be here probably if the neighborhood were older, like the last neighborhood we, we lived in was over 30 years old. So, or right around 30 years old. So, you know, the, the ecosystem changes over time. That's just how it is. That's how, you know, humans disrupt things. And, and, and that's, that's another topic, but, um, so there are scorpions and there are snakes and there are lots of different snakes, including some that are poisonous. So we are very much, uh, cautious when we're outside with Kim. So exiting the back door is something we knew we wanted to train with her. And one of the things also, um, crossing over the street. That was, that's another thing. And when my husband and I were talking about it, he said, we need to get her to sit. We need to get her to look at us and then we can, you know, she can cross the threshold or cross the street or whatever it may be. Basically the same thing for both. Uh, and I was like, you know, let's give it a try. I like, I feel like this is a lot to ask of Kim at one time, especially if we're out on a walk, because there are lots and lots of distractions. Like we need to work up to this. And, um, the more and more I've been working with her, I'm adjusting. And I think that's really important too, is that we, we need to take every situation into account. We need to take every dog into account as an individual um, and not be afraid to change things. And the sit is, re it's just redundant. And it's easy to ask a dog for a sit. In fact, most dogs are just gonna like give you their auto sit. Like, that's what we call it, it's an auto sit because we ask for it so, so, so much that Anytime the dog, your dog thinks that you're going to ask for something that's automatically sit, right? We're going to plop our butt on the down, on the ground, plop our butt down on the ground, right? And then expect that treat. So, um, we need to kind of get out of this cycle and out of this routine. It's redundant. My dog already, uh, she just, she, she already sits at the door. Why am I asking for it? I don't need to ask for it. And you know what, if she's not in a mood to sit, okay, as long as you're checking in with me, I don't need you to sit. Um, it's one thing that, you know, we, we often think that, well, if my dog is sitting they're not doing something else. And that is very true. Don't get me wrong. I actually will use this, um, on occasion to start out training, like 
if we're training not to jump, for instance, that's one thing we can do, but it's only one thing. We need to do so many other things in conjunction. We need to combine these things together. So we're not always constantly asking for a sit. Before we ask our dog for a sit, it's important to think like, is that really what we want from our dog? And uh, I was recently reading when I was thinking about doing this podcast, I wanted to see like, get my thoughts on track and see what other trainers were saying as well. And one of the things that, that, that I saw was about, uh, dog reactivity and the idea of asking your dog for a sit when they're in the presence of what their trigger, whatever that trigger may be, whether it's a dog or a person or a cat or whatever it is, whatever that trigger may be and asking your dog for a sit in that, that instance. And the, the thought there is that, well, if my dog is sitting, they're not doing something else. They're not barking. They're not lunging. Yes, but there are emotions are still there. Um, and are we, you know, we're not validating, we're not taking into consideration their emotions. Uh, now, obviously that's very different from walking out the back door, like casually walking out the back door, um, which is what I've been working on with Kim. She's doing amazing. Like she picks up so quickly. And honestly, I find most dogs do pick up so quickly. As long as you are consistent in what you're asking of them and the way you're asking it and what your expectations are and with re rewarding, right? Like that, as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do, your dog is going to get it, you know, but it's important to really think about why we're asking for the sit. You know, when we're talking about dog reactivity, it's important not to let our dog get to threshold. Why would we need to ask for a sit? We need to turn around, right? If our dog is about to reach threshold, we need to turn around. Uh, and if your dog is sitting, you're not turning around. So I, that, that's where my mind went with that. Like we need to take our dog's emotions and end the entire situation into consideration. Do I want my dog to check in with me when she is asking to cross a threshold? Absolutely. So do I really need that sit? No, I don't really need that sit. I can ask her to wait. I think that's more appropriate. So that's what I've been doing with her. I've been asking her to wait and check in with me. So when I ask her to wait, I then ask her to look. Now, if she gives me the look without me asking, I don't need to ask for it. I can acknowledge it. And then I can release her and let her know it's okay to go over the threshold. So I've been refining uh, this and over time, I'm not going to need to ask for it. She's going to wait and look at me and I'm going to be able to release her. But right now, while I'm refining, while we're working, while I'm refining this, I'm, what I'm finding is that we are just asking for a sit too often and we're getting these auto sits from our dogs that really mean nothing. So what's the point of them? You know, like just rethink what we're doing when we're asking our dog for something. Why are we asking for a sit? Is there something more appropriate we should be asking for instead? And I think in a lot of cases that is true. Now, would I want to ask my dog to sit before getting a meal, maybe? Would I want to ask my dog to sit when she would otherwise want to jump? Yeah, maybe. Do I need to ask my dog to sit before checking in with me? Probably not. So, yeah, and, and do I need to ask my dog to sit when they're in the presence of a trigger? No, I don't, I don't think so at all. I, I don't, I don't think so. And in fact, I think um, when they're in the presence of a trigger, our primary focus should be on removing, uh, removing our dog from threshold uh, and, and keeping them below threshold. That is our primary focus. And I'm not seeing how sit fits into that at the moment. There may be some instances where that, that could be the case. Uh, for instance, if the trigger is moving away, asking for a sit could actually be beneficial because you're, you're providing more distance between your dog and whatever their trigger is. So 
there are certainly every every circumstance is different so i guess the 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 main thing that i wanted to talk about in today's podcast is just how asking for a sit is redundant and we're asking our dogs to sit too often and it's becoming meaningless um and we're getting these auto sits really from our dog that that don't mean anything but they may even be impeding other training and that's what i'm i'm feeling with with kim or i have been feeling with kim which is why i'm i'm adjusting from the sit to the weight i don't need a sit from her i I just need her to wait so why am i asking for a sit so that's basically i'm not anymore but (laughs) that's basically um what got me thinking about today's podcast topic and um got me down this road of of um redundancy and what we're asking our dog to do with with dog training so um this is again a shorter episode however next week's episode guys is going to be so amazing i can't wait for you to uh hear it it is going to be our halloween special uh, and yes it is a little early it's going to be um be like a week and a half before halloween but that's because these podcasts go live on youtube and rumble a week later and i wanted to make sure it was all up before halloween Uh, but it is going to be an interview with mrs layla morgan wild who is an absolutely incredible uh, person and a black cat enthusiast so we are going to be talking about all things black cats next week on our halloween special episode i can't wait for you guys to hear it. So uh, if you are enjoying the podcast, I hope you give it a five-star review on whichever platform you are listening on. And I also hope you are following us. If you're not following the podcast, um, you definitely should and make sure you are getting notifications. If you're watching the video, I hope you give the video a thumbs up and uh, that you do subscribe. Thanks so much for being here again with me. I'm Jessica. This is the Pet Parenting Reset, where we talk about different methods for pet parenting success. And oh, I would be remiss without inviting you to join the family over on Patreon. You get all new and exclusive content, plus, 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 I can't talk, plus, first, I was going to say look, but you get first access <laughs> to anything that goes live um, on other social medias. So thank you guys so much for being here with me today. I can't wait for you guys to hear the interview next week. And until then, give your pets some extra hugs and kisses and love from me. Y'all have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye, guys. Oh, oh. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.